Star Wars enters another dimension, the creator speaks about the live-action TV show, and the Star Tours ride simply cannot be killed. It's Sunday, October 3rd, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead story. StarWars.com made official this week the story that had been long rumored. That Lucasfilm is converting all six Star Wars live-action films to 3D. Beginning with The Phantom Menace in 2012... Each of the six films will be released one per year in sequential episode number. Not surprisingly, reaction on the web was fast and furious. With supporters and detractors both breaking into separate camps almost immediately. No word on whether or not the films will incorporate new changes in addition to being converted to three dimensions. But it is worth noting that by the time the original trilogy films begin rolling out in three dimensions in 2015, 16, and 17 respectively, it will have been nearly 20 years since any of those films had seen wide theatrical release. One almost certain side effect, reports Forbes.com, is that the re-releases will secure Star Wars once again the title of most lucrative box office franchise in history a title they currently hold but will almost certainly lose later this year when the next Harry Potter film is released. The 1997 reissue of Star Wars Special Edition netted almost half a billion dollars for that film alone. Given that another 20 years will have elapsed since these films were released, there will again be an entirely new generation of fans, raised on the Clone Wars even too young to remember the prequels, who will be excited to have the opportunity to see these films on the big screen. The Clone Wars may not be the only show that those young fans are being raised on. George Lucas spoke this week to IGN.com about the live-action TV series. Lucas said that the project is alive and well, but the main roadblock at this time is funding. Well, we have a, a movie of the week in 50 hours written, all done ready to go. It's just that we can't figure out a way of doing it for less than $50 million an episode, and obviously we can't afford to do that. Lucas went on to state, however, that he is confident that technology will continue to advance in such a way that production of the live-action show will become cost-effective. And if that's not enough of the man in flannel for you this week, check out last week's episode of The Clone Wars, episode number four of the season, called Sphere of Influence. Viewers retreated to an animated version of Lucas in that episode, so to speak, as the character he played in a cameo in episode 3, Baron Papanoida, is a major character in the episode, which also features a return to the cantina from Star Wars in episode 4 in animated form, a locale we have not seen since the 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special. This week's collecting news... Gentle Giant announced the next two figures in the line of 12-inch reproduction vintage action figures. They are Han Solo and Chewbacca. They will be available soon for general order and are currently available for Premier Guild members. Variant Hunters take note that there is also a small head version of the Han Solo figure available for pre-order as well. Toys R Us has an exclusive figure and a sale going on this week. The Toys R Us exclusive Clone Wars Slave 1 and Jedi Starfighter Battle Pack is $10 off this week for just under $90. That or any other Star Wars purchase in excess of $30 will net you an exclusive Nikto Guard Clone Wars action figure. Also at Toys R Us, be on the lookout for 30% off all Lego sets, including for once Star Wars sets. Sandtroopers.com again got the jump on the collecting community this week when they were able to release the first photographs of the card backs for the vintage line of figures from the film Attack of the Clones. Featured figures include a re-sculpt of the Peasant Disguise Anakin and Peasant Disguise Padme, Zam Wessel, Jango Fett, Kit Fisto, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. 
Also in this wave, although not pictured yet, are Mace Windu, Super Battle Droid, and the Senate Guard. This wave will be the fourth wave of the Vintage Collection, and is expected to be in stores before the end of the year, but after the yet-to-be-sighted Return of the Jedi wave. Variation hunters take note, Yakface.com has discovered that there is a variation of the Saga Legends Darth Vader figure. The original release of this figure, available since the summer, featured the 2008 two-piece helmet Darth Vader figure, while the currently shipping cases are coming with a repack of the 500th figure Vader from 2005. For those that care, the new figure is easily distinguishable as he has his helmet on in the packaging. It was probably inevitable, and many of you are probably surprised it hadn't already happened, but add Build-A-Bear Workshop to the list of Lucas licensing partners. As of September 24th, three Star Wars-related costumes were available to adorn your newly built bears. These included C-3PO, Han Solo, and Princess Leia. Presumably, there is also Chewbacca, which would simply be a bear without a costume. It's like a freaking country bear jamboree around here! In publishing news this week, Tuesday, October 5th, sees the release of Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 novelization. This complements the graphic novel interpretation of the events, which was released last week. Also released last week by the official Star Wars comic producer was Star Wars Invasion No. 4, Blood Ties No. 2, and a new omnibus, Star Wars A Long Time Ago No. 2, which continues collecting the original Marvel Star Wars comics, this volume collecting issues No. 28 through 49, as well as the first annual. This week's scheduled comic release is Star Wars The Old Republic No. 4. Also available last week was Star Wars The Jedi Path, a hardcover book featuring information for Jedis in training, which comes in a special metal vault packaging. If interested, check out Amazon.com where you can get it for $40 off. And, as always, if you are interested in purchasing any of these books, I encourage you to use the affiliate links on the front page of thisweekinstarwars.com. And while you're there, and if your George Lucas needs still aren't sated, check out the Blu-ray edition release of Lucas's original feature film, THX 1138, the George Lucas director's cut. Available in high definition for the first time, see the film that was so commercially unsuccessful that producer Francis Ford Coppola was compelled to take a job directing The Godfather simply to pay his bills. Lastly this week, two bits of news from the Star Tours ride at Disney. Two new droids were announced on the Disney Parks blog, the first being the new pilot for the ride, Ace, and the second being the spokesbot for Star Tours, a variation on the waitress droid from Attack of the Clones named Ali San San, a name suggested by Lucas himself and derived from the name of the actress who voices the droid, Allison Janney, who you know as the tall talky woman from The West Wing, a show your parents used to watch. Secondly, if you're like me and attended the last tour to indoor event at the Disney Hollywood Studios in August during Celebration 5, and thought you were there for the last tour to Endor, you might be forgiven for misunderstanding the situation. According to WESH, the NBC affiliate in Orlando, the Star Tours ride was closed at an exclusive after-hours event for special patrons with a special ticket. However, this event took place on September 8th, and those special patrons were in fact members of the Disney official fan club, D23. So, for those of you who think you were there that night and closed down the ride for good, please don't shoot the messenger. I've 
seen one feature film in 3D. That was Alfred Hitchcock's 1954 Dial M for Murder. On those couple of occasions when I've seen nature films or whatever at a museum, the main thing that I remember is that I usually get a headache. That and those glasses they give you don't usually fit very well over my normal glasses. Now, I didn't see Avatar or any of the other big budget films that have come out recently in 3D, so I don't know if maybe they've perfected the technology in the meantime. But if not, I really hope they do in time for 2012, because I'm really looking forward to seeing these films in 3D. As I mentioned earlier in this episode, there are a number of fans out there who are very upset about this new release. These tend to be the same fans that so passionately dislike the special editions, and also tend to be the fans that don't like the prequels. My attitude has always been very simple. I've seen the original films hundreds if not dozens of times. They are my favorite and they always will be, and I will always have those memories. So, now if Lucas wants to give me a new way to look at those old films, why wouldn't I welcome that opportunity? And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit www.thisweekinstarwars.com or for our lazier listeners, www.twisw.com or our Facebook page for more information about the show, links to past episodes, as well as other interesting information and tidbits. If you have a question, comment, correction, or suggested story for an upcoming episode, send us an email to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. You've been listening to This Week in Star Wars. We troll the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All of the trademarks are property of their respected trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son.